So, so with that, uh, I want you to spend the, the first half of this meeting just uh, uh, demonstrating the freeform timed assessment, um, which actually could be risky <laughs> because 20 minutes is a really tight amount of time. So I could actually run out of time doing it. But um, so last time I just showed the mechanics of how it would work. I didn't actually do it. So um, so let me just do it and see how that goes. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go into student view and I can also show you one thing in the student view. So, um, because I did this on Monday, you've seen me use my one attempt as a test student. And yeah, that, that's basically it. Now, I think I do say somewhere in the message, where do I say it? That, um, I probably say this at, um, at the start that you have a one attempt. Oh, and I guess I don't say this for this. I say this for the problem set assessment that, you know, you whole, only have one attempt. If something goes wrong, then tell me. And um, yeah, and I think the reason I didn't put that here explicitly is because um, I'm not entirely sure if I'll always give people extra attempt. I probably won't unless there's some very good justifiable reason. But let me just demonstrate that I can, in fact, clear previous attempts so that people can actually have, um, but this is something ex exception also. Um, let me just go to, uh, I'm looking at my second screen where I have the test student attempt, and I'm just gonna go delete that, um, the attempt that the test student to me so that, um, yeah, so when the test student now attempts it again, uh, he will get a new try and it will be like he hasn't tried it before. Yeah. So, so okay. Um, so I, I briefly glanced at the question, but I think the random mediation actually changed the question. So I'll have to just work a different question. And uh, one thing that you will see me do that I don't really recommend that you do is um, you do want to work through it quickly. So, so I'm going to be using my uh, OneNote so that you can see me actually working through. Um, but what I would recommend for you is you should have a piece of paper and work through on the piece of paper. Anything that you do on computer usually takes longer time than just uh, scratching things on a piece of paper. So, um, so during the 20 minutes, you don't have to organize the work. Uh, you can you ha you can have additional time after the time limit to organize your work and attach it. So. Um, so that's uh, uh, what I would recommend that you do. Make sure that you manage your time for that 20 minutes. So uh, with that, let me start. Um, so once I click start, it'll just start and <laughs> I'll have to watch my time. Okay, 6.08, okay. That'll give me some idea. Oh, this is the, yeah, all right. I, I think this is a difficult question. <laughs> I think, is it? Uh, maybe. I. Well, let me just work through it. It says, a cannonball of some mass is being fired from some cliff of uh, some height. I think I might be scaring myself with a homework question. No, wait, it was the time assessment question that was hard. Now, um, I do have a benefit of uh, being very familiar with these questions. But even so, this is an especially long question, so I have to do quickly. Okay, it's being fired. Um... They're not telling me initial velocity. Okay, let me keep going. Uh, the final velocity is measured. Okay, so the cannonball lands, and it's saying that final velocity is measured and um, found to be at an angle theta below the horizontal. Um, in terms of this angle theta, what is the range of the cannon? Uh, there's a type of cannonball R. Um, I think they're labeling ranges R. Give your answer in terms of theta, H, gravitational acceleration, G, M, and any other physical constants needed. So yeah, <laughs> this is a tough question because it's a backward question. Uh, one, I will tell you, so when you look at this uh, statement, it, it should have you scratching your head because um, they didn't give you the initial velocity. Like if they gave you initial velocity, this would be a really easy question to answer. In fact, one of your homework questions was like that. And I think if I'm reading this carefully, um, 
they are not even letting me use the final velocity. They are letting me use the angle, but that's it. They are um, they want me to express my r in terms of theta, h, g, and any other constants. So not fully final. So so that makes this problem difficult because it's um, um, like a siding alphabet backward. <laughs> you have to know alphabet really well to be able to do it backward. So uh, since I'm under the time limit, let me just uh, work through this quickly without too much explanation. So I will um, just to work on screen uh, what that expression is for R. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to write down some expressions that, um, that might have something to do with this situation. So I know it's a projectile motion thing. So the X position is going to be relevant. And with the projectile motion, I know it has zero acceleration. So it's going to be just the initial, or it's going to be the initial x component of velocity times the duration of time. And oh, I guess this is going to be same as this. So let me just change the label here to say the v initial. That's my x component. And this equation has, um, so at the landing time here, let me call this t final. Um, so I don't know t final, I'm just labeling it. <laughs> and uh, the distance it'll have traveled this range. And this is one of those questions that have one, two, three unknowns. <laughs> so I haven't really made any progress, but I'm mapping out what I don't know and um, what I could maybe find out. I would like to find out this time at which it lands. And from my <laughs> numerous practice with the projectile motion. I know usually vertical motion is helpful in finding the duration of time. So let me write that down. Uh, my y final, um, which, uh, so when it's landing, let me just call that position zero. My y final, which I'll la be labeling zero, is y initial plus the initial y velocity times duration of time, or the final time. And um, it's going to be plus one half acceleration times time squared, but I know acceleration is downward at g. So let me say it's minus one half g t final squared. Um, oh, and my because it's been fired horizontally, my initial y velocity is zero. Um, oh, this makes the expression easier. Let me just, um, so I have a zero is equal to. The initial y height is h, um, h minus this term. So let me solve for t final. I'm just going to do that in my head in the interest of time. t final is equal to 2 times h over g square root it. Uh, to get to this, I move this over and then solve for <laughs> it. <in your> <laughs> I'm going to move on. So I can plug this in. Um, and um, I remember doing this on video before. I think there's a recording of me doing this. And um, <laughs> one of the things I will highlight there is that um, that um, you really have a lack of information about your velocities. And um, one of the information that's given that I haven't used so far is this uh, uh, is this um, angle theta. So I'm hoping I can use that somehow. So I'm just going to write down some expressions that involve theta. So theta is the angle by which the, the final velocity is below the hor um, horizontal. So I could say um, tangent of theta is the absolute value of V final Y over V final X. And I think I actually know the V final X. Because it's a horse, um, not, no, I've already labeled V final X because it's a projectile motion, whatever horizontal velocity there was, that's constant throughout. So I can actually relabel this as my V naught, uh, one of the labeled quantities. So, okay, I need to have something about V final Y. Um, so I need, I'm thinking through my kinematics equations. So I wrote down the one involving position. I haven't written down the one involving velocity. So that would be V final, would be V initial 
and plus uh, acceleration time duration of time, or in this case, minus uh, g t final. And my initial y velocity was zero for body component. So I think I know this um, the numerator. Let me just uh, solve in in place. That's going to be g times t final. And um, for the time being, I'm not going to really worry about the signs. I, in the end, I will um, have theta be a positive quantity. So, um, so yeah. Okay, I feel like I might have all the information I need. So um, when you're solving questions like this, one of the things you should do is you should counter nodes, counter equations, or sorry, you should <laughs> counter number of equations and then make sure that your number of unknowns is exactly the same as the number of equations. So let me first start by counting my equations. I have one. This was the very first equation I wrote. I have, uh, uh, I solved this, so I'm going to label this as two. It's the same thing as what I started out with. And this is my equation three. And let's count my unknowns. I had, well, I had a three to start. And this is not a new unknown, so everything is here is known. And everything here is already labeled, like three not. And so I have three equations, three unknowns. I should be able to solve it. <laughs> so let me do that. I think the most natural way to do this is I can use equation two to eliminate t final from every other expression. So that will give me one prime to be, so I'm solving, uh, plugging in this into one. So R is equal to 3 naught times square root of 2H over G. Um, let me plug T final into 3. So 3 prime is becomes uh, tangent of theta equals, um, um, I guess there's a factor of G here. Uh, let me write it out first and then do simplification. G over 3 naught square rooted. Um, 2h over g, I can think of this as a g squared square rooted, at least if I'm not worried about signs. So with that, I can say it's a two, uh, one factor of g here cancels out one factor here. So square root of 2hg over v naught is equal to tangent theta. Okay, um, oh, I can solve this equation for v naught and plug that into my first equation to uh, get an expression for R entirely in terms of these quantities. So uh, solving that for V naught, I get square root of 2HG over tangent theta. Plugging that into there, I get, um, so on prime, um, R is equal to square root of 2HG over tangent theta times square root of 2h over g. And yeah, I think I remember this simplification. G is cancel. Doesn't matter what planet you are on. Um, and square root of 2h times the square root of 2h gives me just 2h. So the final answer here is 2h over tangent theta. All right. Uh, wow. I, that took me <laughs> 10 minutes, which is a little bit too much but uh, so you know here i was <laughs> explaining because i can't stop myself um but you know when you're solving through this i do want you to manage your time well and not be down this too much on just part a <laughs> so let me write down r is equal to uh, 2h over tangent theta and that's uh, really the answer um um let me okay. If the angle theta is found to be equal to 45 degrees, what is the initial speed of V naught? Oh, I think I've done that before. So V naught um, in terms of H. Okay, so I have a that V naught is equal to. So V naught is equal to um, square root of two times H times G and divide by tangent theta. That's where if it's 45 degrees, tangent theta is one. I don't need that. Um, yeah, and the rest are in terms of the variables I'm allowed to use. If the initial speed of the canvas fan uh, when you by firing the at some angle of order. Oh yeah. Um that's gonna take another long <laughs> um 
Yeah, I, I think it's fine. Um, so, you know, find an expression for the range R, given an initial speed and the range launch angle over the horizontal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see, can I do? Oh, I can answer D first. So how does the launch angle theta not compare to 45 degrees? It should be less than 45 degrees for launch angle. Uh, because of the initial height h. <laughs> Landing angle bigger than 45 degrees? Um, don't know. <laughs> um, so this is my educated guess. And I'm putting that in first because I recognize I have seven minutes left. And I want to make sure if I run out of time while solving C, I get some kind of response in for D. So uh, let me try to do a uh, parse again as quickly as I can. And um, I think the two things kind of balance out, which is that, uh, let me actually take a screenshot of this. Two things balance out, which is that, so the way I'm doing this, it actually does take longer than if I were working this out on paper without attempting to explain it to anyone else. Um, so, so there's that aspect. But at the same time, I know these questions much better than most of the people in the class because I've done them a dozen times. So I think those two things um, balance each other out. Let me just put that on the side. That's for later. Uh, so let me just quickly work this out. I got what? Well, about five minutes. So I'm going to scroll down so that I can uh, write. So the situation that the question described was very different or it was a slightly modified, as in I had H and I had a ball that was being launched with, uh, with uh, some initial speed of V0 at some angle theta. So this is the more typical projectile motion question where you are given the initial parameters and then you are asked for what is the range R. And I hope this uh, feels familiar to a lot of people so you can write that quickly. R is equal to the x component of velocity, v not cosine theta times t final. Um, so I need the time information from the vertical motion. So there I will write out the, posi the y position, the, the y final, which will be zero when it lands. That's where I'm labeling y is equal to zero. That'll be initial y height, h. Um, plus so this time you do have initial y velocity. So plus, v not sine theta, the y component of velocity, that's uh, really, this is broken into two parts, v not cosine theta and v not sine theta, uh, times t final, um, minus one half g t final squared. And yeah, so this is the thing that's uh, gonna be Challenge, because uh, nothing here really simplifies the way it did when this was equal to zero. It's not, so you just have to use quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, you would say, all right, so this is my A, this is my B, this is my C in the standard form. So uh, I have my T final is equal to my um, minus B, so minus V naught sine theta, plus minus square root of b squared, so v naught squared sine squared theta, minus 4ac, so minus times it, so that's going to be plus 2g, and then c, so that's 8. Sorry, I'm, about this. Um, I'm not trying to really explain all that well, because I'm under time limit, uh, 4 minutes. Okay, so that's numerator, and divided by 2a. So it's going to be minus uh, one half cancels, so minus g. Oh, so minus is cancel, and in the context to where it matters, this should be now uh, minus plus. And you can actually go this far. Um, by examining this, you can see that when you have minus here, time will be negative, and you don't want that. That represents uh, this time here, which didn't really physically happen for us. So I just want to retain the positive sign here. So with that, my t final is equal to v naught sine theta. Let me split it over g 
plus, and then I have all of this square root of Vina square the sine square theta plus 2g h divided by g. All right, so plug that in there. That gets you the r. <laughs> Let me just type that in. I don't think it really simplifies from there anyway. So I'm just gonna type that in so that I can get an answer in within the time limit. The expression for range is uh, v naught times cosine theta times, and then all of that in. So v naught times the sine theta divided by g plus square root of v naught squared sine squared theta plus 2gh divided by g. I think that's it. Um, and don't worry so much about typos and whatnot. Um, it, this is all manually graded. So when I submit an end, um, it won't, uh, uh, it won't give me a score because it, um, these are just uh, basically essay questions. Uh, a human grader has to look at it and so I have to look at it and <laughs> manually grade it. And I do want you to know how um, sparse information I put in into these answer boxes. And I think that's, uh, um, that's the best thing to do and put your, and put your work into the, the add work thing. And if you have time remaining, you can do that during this time. Oh, you know what? I think I have time. Uh, yeah, let me enter it now. I mean, you don't have to, but hey, if you have time, then why not? <laughs> so, okay. Um, so in my case, it was, a, it, it, this portion was a slightly quicker just to, because I had um, already worked it on a computer. But, you know, most people, I do recommend you work it on uh, paper. So you will need time to scan in at all that. So, um, so, so let me just put in my work for now and then paste it and then paste that. And then I will submit an end. And, um, and it'll actually, after having done that, it'll give you, um, uh, we save a work and continue. I already, oh, I see, save this work and continue. So yeah, after you submit it, it'll actually on the immediate next screen, it'll give you an opportunity to edit this as well, uh, which is fine. If you are ready to do that then, then you can. Now, suppose you um, didn't use that opportunity, then you can see this. I'm gonna refresh this screen. And you will see that it still gives you opportunity to add or attach work or edit the work that you attached previously. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, I guess, the full demonstration of this thing. Um, so these are my answers. And <laughs> um, now if you only have the answers, um, suppose say you got this exact question, if all you have is the answer, then, um, you are not going to get full credit on that. Uh, depending on the complexity of the question, I would uh, the the credit I would give for correct answer but no work would range from somewhere between forty percent of the available points to maybe sixty percent. Um, so you do need to attach work uh, to get full credit. And um, now, so you are given adequate time and to organize the work and. Um, all I ask is that when you're, both when you're doing, uh, submitting the answer and when you are modifying the work, this is one difference between the timed assessment and the, uh, the problem set assessment. So with the problem set assessment, I ex explicitly said that you are allowed to seek help because it's a homework. Um, as long as, uh, whosoever help you are seeking, as long as you understood it, you digested it, and what you submit is your own work with all the help, then that all that's perfectly fine. Um, I, so, um, so that was the rule for problem set. With a timed assessment, no outside help is allowed. And that applies to during the time limit when you are uh, putting in the answers. And it also applies when you are uh, working on this, uh, you, when you are organizing your work after the time limit. So, uh, so you have uh, additional time for the purpose of organizing your work. And um, I do admit the possibility that some people might find the mistakes that they made with more time. 
And um, so what I would say is that as I grade, the first thing I look at is the answer. And if you say, realize that you made a mistake, the thing that you don't really want to do is where you just uh, replace the entirely different work. If I see that your answer and the work don't match at all, then I'm not, uh, I don't look at that favorably. <laughs> but uh, you could explain it, like you could uh, explain in your work how during the time limit you got one answer and then you realize, oh, I made this mistake. I probably won't give a full credit for something like that, especially if the initial error was uh, what I would call major error. But um, it, but that would be the best thing to do and most uh, academically honest thing to do. Uh, so, so that's what you need to do. This is really our replacement for exam, and um, it comes in two parts: the time limit, twenty-minute time limited portion. So, from the time you see what question you got, um, you have only twenty minutes to work out an answer and uh, put it into the system so that it gets saved and submitted. And then, then, then you can take however much time you need to organize your work and edit. You do need to edit, and you may not seek outside help while you are modifying the, if you are modifying the work to be added here. So I think that's uh, it for this demo. Um, since it's not automatically graded, I, um, I, there's nothing more <laughs> for me to show. Other than maybe I guess I could show this. I can show you what kind of things shows on my grading screen. It's actually surprisingly um, similar to what you see. So, so well, um, I'm going to okay grade the list. Okay, um, so, so when I actually grade it, I tend to do it question by question, so that everyone who got the same question, I graded them all together. Um, so, but that screen has thing during the, it might show other people. So, so this is a, a student by student view. So this uh, uh, looks quite similar to the screen you see, except I get additional buttons that instructors have access to. So as I grade it, these are what I'm gonna see. I would see, oh, answer is right or answer is wrong. Or um, as I first look through the answer, I don't um, really assign the points. I always view work before I assign any of the points. So, um, so here, yeah, I didn't really organize my own work well. It does help if you label which part corresponds to what. Like if I labeled all of this for part A, and um, B is something people could reasonably do in their head, and um, this is obviously work for part C, but <laughs> it helps if it's labeled. I didn't label it. But, you know, so that's where I would ask you to maybe organize and, if necessary, revise uh, some of your work. Revise so that I can understand it better. So, so yeah, that's the time assessment. Um, I do have to say, um, this is relatively new. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I never did before COVID because in-person exam is better. I control the exam conditions much better, you know, distraction-free environment. And, but because we can't do that during this time, this is uh, what we have. And, and we'll see how it goes. Um, and I, I think it, it's a, a consideration of something like this that multiple choice does balance things out with the a relatively time tight limit and um, for what it's worth, objective grading uh, between multiple choice and free form answer. I can kind of get a better gauge of how much of the content you understood. Because sometimes people do better on multiple choice just because they're good test takers. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get some answers right, even though I don't understand it because I know how to use process of elimination and all that. Um, on the other hand, you know, people who just don't know anything about kinematics will have a hard time with multiple choice. So I think uh, multiple choice gives you one snapshot of where you stand and um, and freeform gives you the other snapshot. The two are different types. Um, it takes a different kind of reasoning process, problem-solving skills to do well on both of them. So that's really what I'm looking for. Um, 